class. Welcome to Math is Fun! Demental. Today we're going to talk about deductive reasoning and the laws of detachment and the laws of syllogism. So a little review, we learned inductive reasoning, which is to use patterns to make a conjecture or a prediction. Today we're learning deductive reasoning, and deductive reasoning doesn't use patterns, but it uses logic from given statements or facts to make a conjecture. So difference between the two, inductive reasoning uses a series of patterns, deductive reasoning uses logic and fact. Um, within deductive reasoning, we have two laws. We have the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. So first, let's talk about law of detachment. We have the law of detachment states that if the hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true, then the conclusion is true. So symbolically, what that means is I have to be given a conditional statement, P then Q, you know, if P then Q, that's true. It has to be a true statement. And I have to know that P is true or that P is given. If I have those things, then and these two, three little dots mean therefore or then, I can conclude that Q is true. So symbolically, there's the law of detachment for us. Let's look at a couple examples. So the first one says, if there is lightning, then it is not safe to go outside. Johnny sees lightning out his window. So what we want to do is we want to break that first conditional statement into the hypothesis and the conclusion. So here, this is going to be my hypothesis. There is lightning. And I'm going to put a P underneath that. And then our conclusion is that it's not safe to go outside. So that would be my Q. So I have, symbolically, I have a statement that says P, then Q. Now I'm also given another piece of information. I'm given that Johnny sees lightning out his window. Now if we look, it's not the exact wording as the hypothesis, but it's the same information. The hypothesis is there is lightning. Johnny sees lightning, so there is lightning. So that counts for saying that P is true. So I know that P then Q and P is true, so I can conclude Q. I don't want to conclude a whole statement, I just want to conclude the conclusion. So I'm going to conclude that it is not safe to go outside. And that's my answer. So not too complicated, um, but that's the, the general gist of the law of detachment. Let's look at one more example. So here it says, if a figure is a square, then its sides are all congruent. Figure A, B, C, D has all congruent sides, so what can we conclude? Now a lot of students think that, oh, you can conclude that it's a square, but we have to be really careful with the law of detachment. Here, my, my hypothesis is that the figure has to be a square. My conclusion is that its sides are all congruent. So here I have P then Q, and then my additional piece of information that I need says that it has all congruent sides. If we look, that piece of information actually matches Q. It's saying that Q is true. And even though a lot of us might really want to conclude then that P has to be true, unfortunately the law of detachment doesn't work that way. We can only go the direction that it states. We have to be given the hypothesis and then conclude the conclusion. So here, I have no conclusion. I can't conclude anything. And let me kind of give you a little example or counterexample why we can't conclude that ABCD is a square. So counterexample, if I have ABCD with all congruent sides, it doesn't have to be a square. It could be what we call a rhombus. So just because the conclusion that it has all congruent sides was true, it doesn't mean that it has to be a square. So be really careful. Make sure that the ordering goes exactly as the law of detachment states. All right, uh, last piece of information. We have the law of syllogism. That states that you can take two conditional statements and string them together if the conclusion of the first one is the hypothesis of the second one. So symbolically, what I have is I would have P then Q, and then I would have Q then R. So I have three pieces of information here that are totally separate, but the conclusion of the first one ends up being the hypothesis of the second. If I have those uh, specific orderings, I can conclude 
the statement P then R. So I can take out the middle guy. I can take out the Q. So let's look at an example. If it is raining, Susie will stay inside. If Susie stays inside, she will play board games. So here we have three pieces of information. We have it is raining. Let's make that our P. We have Susie will stay inside. We'll make that Q. And then Susie stays inside is repeated. Remember, that's Q. So it's not a new piece of information. It's the same. And then she will play board games is our third um, piece of information here. So I have if it is raining, Susie will stay inside. I have P then Q. Then I have if Susie stays inside, she will play board games, which is Q then R. This fits our law of syllogism. So my conclusion should be a conditional statement, P then R. Now notice if uh, we were using law of detachment in the last example, our conclusion was not a conditional statement. If we look back, it is not safe to go outside is not an if-then statement. It's just the conclusion part. But for the law of syllogism, we want our conclusion or what we want to conclude from these statements to be a complete conditional statement. So I need to say P, which is if it is raining, and then I can take out the cues. I can take out those middle pieces. And I would say, she will play board games. But I want to say who she is because it's not stated yet. So I'm going to say, Susie will play board games. And that's what we can conclude using the law of syllogism. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.